Hello, my name is Dr. Khaled Salme and I'm a doctor in London. Today we're going to be having a look at an awesome anime called Dr. Stone. Now, it was a few of you that recommended it to me and you wanted me to break down some of the medical and science scenes. Now, if you haven't seen Dr. Stone, it's a fantastic show. The premise of the show is that everybody has been turned into stone on Earth after an event called petrification. Sounds scary enough. But a kid, I guess he's a kid, he's a looks like a teenager, but a teenager scientist gets revived over 3,000 years in the future in this post-apocalyptic world where there is no technology and no science. He has to go back and rediscover some of humanity's greatest scientific discoveries. And that's what the show is. I'm already hooked. Let's go. So, so is it. Cool, eh? Oh, great scene. I love how the Everything is breaking apart, the science and technology. What are those? And he's got to rebuild all of that. I guess that's the, the evil character in the story. That should be interesting. Ah, these are the parts where he's going to rebuild them. It's going to be interesting to see how he's going to do that. He's got a flag. He's made a flag as well. It's pretty cool. Ooh, those look like nice grapes. So I think I know what's going on there. He's got beautiful ripe grapes there and he's just bitten into it. Grapes are really, really high in sugar and especially if they're ripe. But what happens is that once you get lots of sugar there, you get something called yeast that goes in and they start a process called fermentation. This process as a byproduct creates ethanol, which is essentially alcohol and it doesn't taste that good. But alcohol was used in medicine back in the day, but also to some degree nowadays, we use it for alcohol wipes, you know, to clean our hands, to clean um, areas where you're putting injections in. But back in the day, it was used as an anesthetic, which means that it stopped you from feeling pain, especially if you had lots of it. Not that I would suggest you do that, but that's what they did back then. It was also used as an antiseptic, which we still use it for. And lastly, they used it basically to say, you know, for good health, the phrase, let's drink to good health. People thought drinking alcohol made them better. The stories of grandma giving people their cough medicine. But also, really cool thing, back in the day, thousands of years ago, imagine, when they were having battles and say you injured your leg and you got something called gangrene, which is your leg dying because the circulation is just lost, what they would do is first of all, give you alcohol. So you're drinking it, getting a bit drunk. And then what they would do is chop that leg off and then afterwards pour alcohol onto the wound to clean it. <sighs> that sounds painful. Like, I just shaved and I put aftershave on and <sighs> I tell you it was painful. This would have been like 10 billion percent worse. Remember, winemaking can be dangerous, so don't try it at home. Over to you at the studio. Oh, that sounds painful, but let's learn about that. She's fallen over and she's basically had the wind taken out of her, the phrase is, is basically being winded. If you get a big enough impact into your abdomen, your diaphragm, which are the muscles below your lungs, which help you breathe, suddenly start to go into spasm, which makes that noise. It sounds really painful and believe me, it is, but hopefully she's okay. So don't make wine at home. That, that's what can happen. Major beef going on here. Yeah, it's nice of him. So what Tsukasa here is threatening is that he will do a blow so powerful that it will completely knock out Senku's cervical nerve. So let's have a look at this nerve and see whether A, it's gonna be painful, B, it's gonna make him unconscious, and C, it's gonna kill him. I don't know. So the cervical nerve does a few things. The first thing is it takes sensation from your arms, your shoulders, your neck, 
and it sends these signals to your brain. So if you notice that you're, you know, you're feeling something, that's what the uh, cervical nerves are doing. But that's the dermatomes. The myoterms are the muscles that it affects. So that's for movement. And again, it's the same areas. So it's your arms, your shoulders, your neck, and some of the head as well. So yes, theoretically, if he knocks it with a great enough blow that it's completely like destroyed, then Senko will not be able to control his arms and not feel anything there. But will it kill him? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It depends. Like if he if he gets a good enough blow and like some of the spinal uh, processes are broken and there's bleeding and there's damage. But the thing that I would be more afraid of is the spinal cord. That's the main cord with all of the nerves in the middle of the spine. Because if that's cut, anything below it, you will not feel and you will not be able to move. So that's what I'd be more afraid of. In terms of consciousness, it's more to do with the vagus nerve and your brainstem, because if you lose any of those two, then you will be unconscious. So uh, not so much with the cervical nerve on this one, but it is an important nerve to have. And I think in this situation, if he damages it, then he may be toast. Thank you. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, he's done it. His pupils are okay. We might be okay. Damn! He can't be dead already. What are we, episode five? Uh, we will see. Let's see what happens. Doesn't look good. They're doing something called cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR. Fairly recent Yes, finally some sense. Uh, she's spot on on this one. She's saying, keep the neck still. When somebody's had a head injury, neck injury, the last thing they want to do is move the neck. That can make the injury worse and it could paralyze the person. Also, those are funky looking lips there. But yes, part of CPR is doing the, the breaths. You do two breaths and I'll go into that in a moment. But importantly, looking at what they've done, they've taken him away from danger. And that's the first thing and that's always recommended. Hopefully they've kept the neck still. They've then hopefully assessed to make sure Senko isn't breathing before giving resuscitation because sometimes people can be unconscious and they could still be breathing. And now they've been doing chest compressions. You normally do about 30 of these and then you do two rescue breaths. What would be really useful is if you see it over here, it might be a bit easier for you to kind of understand how it's done. So let's do that. This is Senku. He's uh, Dr. Stone. You see he's made of... Okay, um, can, can we edit that out maybe? Okay, come with me whilst we meet Senko. This is Senko and we're gonna revive him and I'm gonna show you how to do resuscitation properly. So, the most important part first of all is in terms of the CPR, you wanna do it on the center of the chest where the breastbone is, so that hard part. What you wanna do is to get the palm of your hand, this kind of area, just place it on there. Put your other hand over the top, interlock the fingers, and then make sure your elbows aren't bent because that just makes it really difficult. Lock the elbows out, and then you're going at a rate of about 100 to 120 beats per minute. And if you know the Stain Alive song, you can do that in your head. All right, and remember 30, so you've got to be counting it in your head, which I've not been doing at the moment because I'm talking to you. And then you do two rescue breaths, pinch the nose, tilt the head a little bit, rescue breath, and then another one, and then back to chest compressions. And then within a couple of minutes, hopefully, Senko, my friend, is gonna be alive. That brings us to the end of the review and thank you for watching. It's been awesome watching this anime so far and some of the science has been incredibly realistic. So I'm so looking forward to the next few episodes. I think they start to make antibiotics. Super pumped to break that down. If you want to see that one, drop me a comment below. If you're not subscribed already, it's probably a little button to press here so you can get the notification to so hit the bell. When I make the next video on antibiotics, it will come straight to your eyeball. 
Um, I do another reaction video up here if you're interested, but I need to have a good sign off. I don't, I've not come up with a good enough sign off yet. If you have any suggestions, let me know, but I've got one. Thank you for watching. I've been Dr. Khaled. You've been bloody awesome. I'll see you on the next video. That's, that was pretty awesome.